meeting. Uh, we have with us, um, well, I'll let you introduce yourself regarding our 55. Thank you. Um, yeah. The uh, prompts. Thank you so much. Replacement or whatever. Yes. Um, I'm Anna Litton, Director of Libraries, and I'm joined today by Adam Del Molino, who is a long time. Library trust. Yeah. Well, I'm going to um, yield the floor to you. You tell us, um, you, you have a, a presentation for us, and so just take it from here, and when you're finished, then we'll open it up for questions. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Tara, I'll just give you a thumb. Okay. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, as I said, I'm Anna Litton, Director of Libraries. We are excited to come before you today to share an update on the Fox Branch Library and provide contacts for Warrant Article 55, an article of appropriation as required by the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program to remain eligible for significant grant funds. So I'm Adam Del Molino, uh, 170 Newport Street, Precinct 10. Um, and thank you so much for having us here tonight. You know, Arlington has a really long history and a proud history of providing excellent library services. Library services first came to East Arlington in 1917 when the East Branch Library opened in the Crosby School, now the Leslie Ellis School, excuse me. Uh, since then, library services have been an important part of the community fabric of East Arlington. However, this popular branch library has never truly met the needs of everyone in the community. From the crowded days of service in the basement of the Crosby School to today, the library has remained inaccessible to community members using wheelchairs or other mobility devices. Today, library patrons face a stare before they can enter the building. And we know how much that uh, inhibits the ability of people to be able to use our library. And the library's you know, popular programs, if you haven't noticed as well, they're hosted in a lower level community room that's accessible only by way of a staircase. Today, the Fox Branch Library really is a thriving uh, community location in East Arlington, and it is busier than it has ever been before. Circulation has been steadily growing at the branch over the years. Today, 19% of our print materials circulate out of the Fox Branch Library. Not only does our visitor count continue to rise, but we're seeing a much more diverse group of visitors enter the Fox to access library services. Uh, the Fox has a reputation as being a library for children and families, and that is true. It's an important location for children and families in East Arlington. But today, we also see adults who are looking for workspaces. Uh, we see tutors meeting with children. We see people who are looking for a place to hold a remote meeting or do some work during the day as so many people have turned to remote work. We also see an increasing number of residents choose to pick up their holds at the Fox Branch Library. Library programs like our popular Thursday morning sing-along remain important to kids and families throughout our town. And many com community members choose to use the Fox Branch Library's community room for their uh, meetings, for opportunities like this, for people to get together in the community. The community room was booked 347 times in FY23, but every single one of those meetings was inaccessible, not except open to anyone using a wheelchair or other mobility device. Uh, I think many of you know, and we've invited many of you to attend tours that we're hosting right now at the Fox Branch Library to help people understand context of those tours. Last week on Wednesday, I was giving uh, one of those tours in the evening, and a woman on the tour said, oh, yeah, we hold our precinct meetings here. And then she said, is that illegal? And I had to be honest and say, yes, it is. This meeting is not actually open to everyone because it is hosted in this inaccessible basement. I mentioned that the, uh, we've seen a lot of growth at the Fox Branch Library, but I really want to focus on this piece for a moment. Uh, we have seen over 200% growth in circulation at the Fox Branch Library in the last 10 years. In FY13, we circulated about 41,000 items. And in FY23, we circulated 121,687 items. I have been visiting a number of branch libraries recently, and uh, I have both of the branch libraries who have been uh, recently renovated in our area, the Valente branch in Cambridge and the East Boston branch library in um, Boston. 
both of those, of course, are in big, bustling communities. Uh, we circulate more items out of the Fox Branch Library than they do at either of those. So a small point of pride for us. It really is an important location. So our request for all of you is obviously we're here before you tonight to request your support for Warren Article 55 at the 2024 Arlington Town Meeting. We are seeking a general fund appropriation via this warrant article uh, for $150,000 to secure the matched funds up to $100,000 from the state for the planning and design for a new building. The appropriation is a required element of the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Grant Program. And in 2023, we've already started the process to, to begin to gain access to this funding and Anne's been leading that charge. Um, in particular, the library has and the library trustees use state aid funds to contract with library planning associates to complete a needs assessment study for the Fox Branch Library. The work included an extensive community engagement phase. We had a survey that had more than 1,000 respondents. And the end result of that process is the library building program, which is the document that Anne's working on right now that will really kind of push us and catapult us into the future with regards to um, the planning for this, this branch library and construction for this grant library. If this is funded, this document then gets handed over to an architectural team um, during the planning and design phase of the work. The building program is the are the instructions for the architect, specifying the spaces and the space needs that are identified through the needs assessment process that we've been undergoing right now. And it's gonna guide the architecture team in designing a building that best responds to the needs that we identify through this planning process um, and this, the library uh, building program. In 2015, um, acknowledging that the Fox Branch Library's facility didn't meet legal or functional needs for the community, we went back, and if, if you don't remember, this is all pre-pandemic, really, but uh, the library contracted with a, with a company called On Bay Hot Architects um, to conduct a space study and make recommendations for a new library, and actually looked at both libraries, not just the Fox, but also the Robbins. Um, in 2017, we worked in the library trustees with Ann Beha and, and our former library director to re we release what's called the Reimagining Our Libraries program, offering the community a really bold vision for how we can have and look at both library spaces in Arlington. And during that 2015 to 2018 Reimagining Our Libraries project and process, again, pre-pandemic, Along with the architectural team, um, they looked at the building and determined that rebuilding um, a new building would be a better path forward than renovating, preserving this outdated, inaccessible building. You know, there are obvious deficits like the lack of accessible entryways that we talked about. There's no elevator in the building, and that's only part of the problem at 175 Mass Ave. The building opened in 1959 to support town office space, as well as a library and significant interior work would be required to make the building fully functional as really as a modern library. The lower level, if you've been in the lower level, it's not level. <laughs> uh, there's a raised floor area in parts of the lower level, level that make the, the building area really non-functional. Additionally, the building envelope is not adequate for a net zero building. So all the work that we did on the Reimagining Our Libraries project back in going on almost five years ago now, that work was obviously disrupted by COVID, but the seeds for this project now that we're working on um, before you today, that we're planted way back then. Additionally, I think we should note, and it's really important that um, State Senator Cindy Friedman, Representative Sean Garbley, Representative David Rogers, we wanted to thank them because they've done a little bit of work already. They uh, put forth a state bond authorization that was in a, a piece of legislation that was signed by Governor Baker that provided for up to a million dollars for infrastructure and accessibility upgrades to the EFM Fox Library. And that's that's on the books right now. And can, obviously you have to work through the state's capital plan to get the uh, administration to authorize the funding for construction. Um, and we're grateful to have that support from our state delegation for this project as well. I just want to discuss for a few moments what the MPLCP grant funds are and what becomes available to our community if we do secure these funds. Uh, today really is the right time to pick up this project and continue the work of the 2015 through 2018 Reimagining Our Libraries work, mainly because the MPLCP funds are now, the grant round is open. In 2022, the uh, Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners announced that this grant round would be open in 2023, offering communities the opportunity to apply for state funds to support library construction programs. 
This grant opportunity was last to open in 2016, so these funds have not been available to communities since 2016. This grant offers us a wonderful opportunity for the community, for many communities, hopefully, to receive significant state funds for library construction projects. Uh, grants from the state this and this grant round uh, are at a maximum of $17 million, so a significant amount. The MPLC grant process includes one application for two phases. Uh, the design and planning phase, which we are discussing today, and then a separate construction phase, but there is only one grant application for both of these phases. Communities awarded this grant will receive 50% of eligible costs for the planning and design phase with a limit of $100,000. For the construction phase, communities are awarded incremental state shares with increments tied to the estimated cost of each project. Additional funding is built into this grant process to support green infrastructure. Uh, and I truly believe that supporting this grant process will have a long and real-term benefit for the, for the community of Arlington. So what's next for us in this project? Uh, the MPLC grant package is due in May of 2024. And as we said, to remain eligible for this grant, an official certified copy of the vote for appropriation for $150,000 as discussed in Article 55 must be received by the MBLC uh, uh, at 4 p.m. on June 16th, 2024. I'm convinced that this community, of course, would be far ahead of that deadline. Grant decisions will be awarded in October 2024, beginning the planning and design phase of work. The MBLC, uh, MBLC suggests that grantees will begin construction sometime after August of 2027, which gives a gap between the planning and design phase and construction. And this is the period in which we would have the opportunity to get cost estimates. Cost estimates are expected for these projects in late 2025. So we're really fortunate to have the support from all of our library trustees, the Arlington Libraries Foundation, Friends of Robbins Library and the Fox and Robbins Shop as we look to the future here. Uh, the trustees of Robbins Library will be able to provide some trust fund financial support for this project as well. The library administration and Anna and her team and the trustees have been working um, with the volunteers from the Arlington Libraries Foundation to build support for a capital campaign. And we'll be looking to all of our supporting organizations in the months and years ahead. And we really appreciate uh, the support of this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, so there had been talk at one point about putting housing on top of the Fox. Can we do that and still be eligible for this grant? Yes, thank you for asking this question. We are applying for this grant under the shared facility category. Uh, and we will remain, we are eligible for that. And at this stage, what we are, the grant funds that we would receive would be for the library space. Uh, but yes, we are still uh, still in the process of investigating the fit and feasibility of adding additional house, uh, uh, floors for housing um, above. Okay, and then I have a follow-up question to that, which is when you think about this project in terms of sort of a rough pro forma, you're assuming some money from this grant round and you're assuming you're gonna raise some money in a capital campaign. And are you also assuming some funds from the state's capital planning process? And I don't know whether CPA money is eligible for libraries, but. Um, I don't know the answer to that either at this stage. Um, Great. And if we don't, if you can't get this $150,000 from us, then are you able to put that $150,000 together out of private funds? Or is this, or does the MPLC, whatever those initials are, really want to see town support? The latter. This okay. grant does look for, a, it's not just about the funding, but there is an appropriation and there does right. need to be the vote on that appropriation. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, so I'm clear. So the the um, we allocate 150k. The state would match 100k. That and what would we spend that 250,000 on? 
Thanks for asking. So this is for the planning and design phase. This is the stage at which we contract with an architect. The work that we have done so far, the work that we have funded via State Aid for Libraries is to really design, to do the community engagement piece of work. And then when we go to, in our contract conversation, in our conversations with an architect, we'll be able to come already with stated community needs uh, to move that conversation along faster. So this work is for work essentially with the architect. Okay, and how much of the 2015 to 2018 work can be reused? Do you want to see? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we know, <laughs> all of us sitting here in this room today know, of course, that many things have changed in the world since 2015 to 2018. Uh, one of the things that's changed a lot in Arlington is the way our libraries are being used. So although we learned quite a bit during that reimagining our libraries work, as we've said, we've seen huge growth in our libraries since then, and the way that our libraries are being used is a bit different as well. So although we've been able to refer back at that work, we did engage in some community engagement, again, because uh, things have changed. How people are using libraries, what people are looking to from a public space, uh, the needs that people have there are quite different. Okay, so historical, really sounds like they're kind of starting, maybe not completely over, but some of the going back a bit yeah some of the structural work that we in the investigation that was done by yeah on beha back then was really helpful and helping to inform I mean, this process in terms of the things we need and also feasibility of the building itself yeah that, that was really building. helpful that was that was a really helpful part yeah, of the process kind of a process <laughs> Yeah, and I would say uh, Adam's words are so correct. Everything has been informed by what came before, but we are in a new place. Other questions, Charlie? So, um, have, have you presented this to the, uh, is it, did you review this with the planning department or with the board of selectmen? We presented to the select board on January 22nd. And uh, we have been working with the planning department uh, in a number of different pieces, uh, both the fit and feasibility for housing and planning has been involved in some of our discussions around this building as well. And how come, um, how come this isn't in the capital plan? There, the reason that this, prob this program is not in the capital plan at this stage is we don't actually have any construction numbers at this stage. Um, we, Again, since we have not had any conversations with an architect, under the guidelines for this grant round, we begin with a needs assessment and don't actually talk to an architect until we really have completed that needs assessment. So we have not had conversations with an architect and do not have construction estimated construction costs at this time. <clears throat> I, I, my recollection is that the Capital Planning Committee has financed uh, studies for projects in the past. Um, have you had any, any conversations with the committee at all? Yes, um, specifically with Ida Cody. So we have been in touch about this project. Uh, we have not presented to capital planning at this stage, but certainly we have had quite a few conversations um, with Ida as well as with Alex and Jim around thinking about when this is going to, how to fit this most effectively into longer term discussions at capital planning. Thank you. You said that the, uh, you have to have a certified vote by June 16th. Correct. Uh, my understanding is that the um, attorney general, you have this in the, in the regular town meeting, the, the attorney general doesn't um, accept these articles. I don't know you. The right word, but uh, he has to certify the, the votes of town meeting. That doesn't happen until after July 1st. My understanding is that those are for bylaws. This is not a bylaw, this is actually an appropriation. I'm not sure. But sure. it's something you should look into. Was it Thank you. Had a conversation with town council? You've had that conversation with town council, or you will have that conversation. We will. Okay. Anything else, Sean? No, that's all. Thank you. So, um, hi. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, you know, two quick questions. One, it sounds like <clears throat> at least since 2015, you've been aware, or 2018, you've been aware of ADA non-compliance for the building. What has happened since then? I mean, has there been any money spent on ADA compliance or efforts to bring to fix these problems? 
just had a conversation about that today. Uh, we are actually having an automatic door installed uh, on our Mass Ave entry. Uh, the Mass Ave door is even the installation of an automatic door opener there will help. The door is not, it, it's not actually ADA wide enough um, at the moment. So we are making uh, adjustments as we can. The building itself requires, there's just so much that's not accessible about it. That's a recent conversation today, but in the previous 10 years, have you brought to the town or the finance committee the need for spending for ADA compliance? I cannot answer that question as a, I've only been the director for a year and a half. This has been an ongoing issue for the Library Board of Trustees for a long time, preceding my time here, and I joined the Library Board of Trustees in 2008, 2009. Uh, so it's been an issue. It wasn't ever really addressed. I don't think there was political will and appetite, really, frankly, to address issues surrounding uh, capital needs for that building. Um, and there was much more appetite to supporting the growth of services and hours and, and supporting staff at that location to be able to grow it. And I think, you know, from the circulation numbers that you see here, doubling of our circulation over that time period has been helpful. I agree, and I think it's really important that we haven't done what we could. I'm also a, a parent of a child with disabilities, and uh, knowing and understanding how the town should be supporting these types of initiatives, um, you know, it's something that's always on our radar and has been on the radar since we started. I started on the board, and um, my other colleagues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, shifting, I understand. Um, so this would be an appropriation. Um, we brought up recently. I, there was a sale of some artwork and it goes into the town funds. I understand a couple of those pieces did really well. Do you know what the total was going to the town out of those that recent sale? I do not have those final, I don't have uh, with me numbers from any of those auctions. Um, that Those funds are still tied to that, um, that truck fund and those, that money until we work, continue the project to work with the attorney general to break that trust are not available to right. us. Right. I'm just curious, you know, taking from one. And yeah, it, exactly. It is additional money that exactly. is out there for, for the town. Because okay. I understand a couple pieces didn't. Well, yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, um, I think the problem is with the um, referendum provisions that um, you know, town meeting has to end at a certain point and then the citizens have the ability to go out for a referendum if they get enough signatures. And uh, that has a certain period of time. Not likely to happen, but I think the our town accountant or the controller couldn't certify the vote until town meeting closes and there's a certain 10 days or whatever it is, uh, business days after that for the people to get signatures to put the put the question on a ballot. Like I said, I'm not sure it would ever happen, but you might want to figure that into the calculations. And if there is a special town meeting going within the annual, it might be worth looking at um, putting it in a special so it could get going quicker. My second question is $150,000 could probably take that door expand it and have a fully accessible, handicapped accessible door off of Mass Ave. I don't know how much an elevator for one floor costs, but uh, you know, we've been going to the people for a lot of their money over the last 10 years. It might be good to look at a less expensive option. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can you talk about uh, the million dollars that so when did that get put in a bond bill? So it was 2022. Correct. So 2022. yeah, so it was put in the bond bill in 2022. And is there, were there any specific conditions for that or uses, designated uses for it? The specific language is uh, for infrastructure and accessibility upgrades. And that's essentially the entire yeah. language. And then you gotten, because the, the whole process is at least two steps. Getting into the bond bill is great, but uh, that the easier steps yes. um, getting the administration to actually authorize funding from it. Have you gotten any uh, indication that they're, they're going to 
going to do that. So I think this is all part of the process, right? Like we have to go through this process first that's required by the Board of Library Commissioners before we get down the road to sit there and say when it's in there. It's authorized, it's in the bond bill, it's on the books until they take it off the books. It's incumbent upon us to work with our state legislators to work with the administration to sit there and say, you need to authorize and fund, this is authorized, now you need to fund that appropriation and talk to the Executive Office of Administration and Finance and the governor um, to be able to sit there and say that this should be included and we would like it to be funded. And we know that they have a cap, just like everybody else is, they have a cap that they have to work under and, and provisions they have to live under. Um, but it's our job as library trustees and work with Anna and work with other town members, um, town town officials to be able to prevail upon them to do that. It's hard work and, you, and you're competing yeah, so with, I, with so I, many I, other I communities and so many other world, projects. So, yes, I know. Yeah. Um, then my other question is in terms of the, um, when you get to the point, uh, even though you don't have construction costs yet, yet, I think we can assume those construction costs will far exceed the capacity of Arlington's capital funding capability. You thought at all about how you would go about doing that, whether you know, debt exclusion or I think that there's a lot at this stage, there is a a lot of unknown pieces. For example, um, Annie referred to the fit and feasibility study that we're working on right now for housing. Um, there are many different development models that we might go through that might also provide some funds for the complete structure. Um, and at the moment, as we know, as this building is taking shape, we do not have yet a formal plan for what, how we really would put this package together. Are we looking at that exclusion? What are we looking for? I'm looking forward to coming back as we do know more information. Right, I mean, to say the obvious, that's quite a planning effort to get to that point. Correct. Sure. Thank you. Katie? Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you for the presentation. So my question has to do with the, the potential housing and how the architect, like he's described this 150,000 as being specifically for the library and involving in the architect. And I'm curious how that architect could possibly work without some guidelines within from the whole housing question. And I'm curious what you have to say about like, the timing of those types of issues. I, I hate to see the library delayed because of this housing issue. And it just seems complicated and risky. Uh, correct. And I'd like to address First of all, I want to be absolutely clear that we, our responsibility, the responsibility for the work that I do, the responsibility of the Board of Library Trustees is to lead with the Library First project. My responsibility to the community is to provide wonderful library services to our community. That is what I'm going to be doing. At the same time, uh, we are working with Claire Ricker on this fit and feasibility study. Uh, we, uh, Claire secured a $77,000 grant for the One Stop from Growth Program, that's the a state program, as well as a $15,000 grant from MAPC last year. And the work, the Fit and Feasibility Study work is beginning right now on that project. That project is ex expected, the Fit and Feasibility Study, including the community engagement, is expected to take six months. So... By uh, by the kind of middle of fall, we will have an understanding of whether or not we will be able to proceed with a building that incorporates housing or not. And when we do work with the architect, we are going to be working with the understanding uh, that we're either going forward just with this library or with the library and an additional piece. Uh, currently, the uh, West End Branch Library in Boston, it's right on Cambridge Street past the hospitals, is being redeveloped in, in a very similar manner to this library. Um, the way that they are working on that project and the way that we would if we continue down this path is essentially they call it two condos. There's a library condo and there's the condo condo. And the condo condo includes multiple units. And these two separate entities do function together. We've communicated to the architect together, but we really are talking about two separate pieces in one envelope. Thank you. Dean and Karen. I guess I just, more of a technical point I'm definitely not understand, so bear with me. Um, 
Did you have the comptroller approve review your article? Um, town council reviewed our article. This, my, here's my suggestion. I think you should talk to them because I think you should have a common understanding. I explain what I think your question is. Okay. There are two things. First one doesn't really matter, but I really pointed out is um, you don't need the approval of town meeting to apply for or spend grant funds. Um, as an example, I would use the school department applies for expense grants all the time and never gets approval from town meeting. Um, it's just it's it's not a it's not an appropriation, right? So maybe we can put that aside. Just a it's a technical point, right? Second thing is so municipal governments, all governments, run under this model of fund accounting. They're like, like I, I call I call it bucket accounting. Okay, it makes it much simpler. And what we and each bucket has its own powers and abilities and stuff like that. And that's why when you look at the warrant for the finance articles, there are many of them, not just one giant article, because some money like in the capital budget, that goes into a fund that can roll over from year to year. The general fund um, does not have the ability to roll over. And that's, if you really spend time to understand why each one is there, it has a pretty rational point. When I read your article, it doesn't say where the money would go from the town. And so the question it begs to me is if it gets appropriated on July 1 of 2024 and it's not spent by June 30, 2025, does it evaporate? Because it doesn't say that it's going into a fund that can turn. And I don't want you to wake up on a technical point on July 1 and be like, wait, my money's gone. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and Eva can tell you really quickly, she could be like, okay, this is where I think it's going to go. Now, let's assume it passes here because the, the, this whole discussion we're having right now is moot without it, right? Well, if, if she says, if we say, if, if the finance committee votes to recommend it and Eda comes back and it's like, no, I'm going to put the general fund and it's gone. We could, we could figure something out. If they still could figure things out. It could be, you can work with town council to put it somewhere else, things like that. But I just want to make sure that you're, you don't end up mm -hmm. finding yourself in this tiny little Thank you. mess Thank you. that has no purpose to it. Yeah, appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Carolyn. Um, <clears throat> an odd question. Is there any chance this building would end up wood or something burnable, or is it more likely to end up brick or other things? I've, I've looked at other municipal and school buildings and they all, none of them seem to be wood. Is that? I imagine that there are building regulations for a public building like that, that makes it a wooden structure. Um, Not unlikely. unlikely, yeah. Okay, good. But that's speculation. I don't right. know what the regulation says. Michael. So do we know what adding an elevator would cost just by itself? Easily 800,000. That's why I think it's five million dollars is was the number right. that was chosen. Elevated to a partial second story with a with a with a broad broad modern meeting room to uh, accommodate the the needs that you uh, mentioned at the beginning of your talk. It's actually the basement has a has a conference room. Well, uh, I'm suggesting something something which would be a much much more partial renovation than what we're talking about here. Say an elevator to a new space, you know, partial second story. Uh, to get people out of the basement. Has that been specked out? Oh, oh I see what you're In the Reimagine Our Library's work, they did not actually spec out any a rebuild or a, they did discuss a rebuild. They had really decided at that time that our, under, with the recommendations of the architect, uh, a large renovation, even as large as, um, or even as small in some ways, as uh, moving to a partial second floor, at that time, it was the decision was made that that was not actually a, a, a cost-effective path forward for this building. Okay. Last question: If we endorse raising one hundred fifty thousand dollars, matching the state's hundred thousand dollars, engaging the arc, can we start the grand process towards? Do we have any idea what the total tens of millions of dollars will be at the end? Not today. Uh, Ellen Jones and then Jennifer Linnan. Um, apologize if I'm misreading this, but I was just looking, going through the, the grant uh, website, and one of the conditions was we must provide at least two site options for the application. Yes. Is that, is that relevant? 
Yes, uh, as in a built out community like Arlington, we have to show that there really are, it's pretty easy for us to show that there really aren't other locations available. So it's okay if there's no other options. Correct. We have a, we just okay. give real estate comps. Okay. Um, I'm okay. just confused about Dean's first uh, point. So when the school committee applies for a grant, we've already approved their budget and we can't micromanage their budget. So they, they do what they want with that. But don't we have to approve, does how many have to approve this amount of money? No, it's like the CDBG grant. We don't approve it, we endorse it. But this is an appropriation. It's no, it says, it says, no, it, if you read the article, the article talks about two sources of money. The first point, it's, it's asking for permission to spend a grant. No, but we're asking for money to match the grant, the grant right? Nope. We're asking. For 150000 from the town, 100000 from the grant, the matching. It says to see if the town will vote to apply for, accept, and expend Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program grant funds. So and, the town and, never and, and vote to raise and appropriate appropriate or take from available funds the sum of 150000 yeah, so that's what we have Correct. And so what I said was the first half I said. Okay. 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 need to be in there. Got it, got it, okay. I, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you did the work between 2015 and 2018 and you worked with an architect and a consultant or whatever, w w did anybody do a study of the structural integrity of the building itself and the ability to add anything upward on top of it, et cetera, without actually knocking it down and building something more? Correct. We do have a structural report from uh, that was part of the work that happened then. The architecture firm, I believe, is called Ms. Yours. Um, and at that time, they determined that uh, building above on the site was the building was not structurally sound. Okay. And so, if we give you this hundred fifty thousand dollars, we're leveraging a hundred thousand dollars from the state, but we're also leveraging the money that's in this grant round. And according to your slides, that could cover up to 60% of the cost and up to $17 million. Correct. So if we don't appropriate this $150,000, we don't have a bite at the apple on the potential 60% up to $17 million to support the project. Correct. And when you talk about the two condo idea, that means you would have to have a development partner on the housing side presumably Housing Corp of Arlington or someone else like that, that you would be in conversation? You started a conversation with them? At this, we have, well, we've talked to them a while ago. Uh, before we even talk to anyone like Housing Corporation of Arlington, it is, we need to have a sense of how many units we're even talking about. Housing, how, yeah. yeah uh, particularly a nonprofit developer right. needs a number of units. Right. And so, when we talk about what funds would be expended on the library, we are talking about the state money, the capital campaign, and potentially some capital funds from the town. For the library part only, if any housing is built on top, the development partner will be paying those costs. Correct, and the development partner, if it is a nonprofit development partner, will also have access to other uh, state monies for those pieces. And federal money. Correct. Okay. Other questions? Charlie. <clears throat> for a development partner, why not look for somebody who's not a nonprofit <clears throat> and charge them for the airspace? That's certainly not off the table at this stage. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thank and you so much. We'll be in touch. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much. We appreciate the time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, all right, Drake. Uh, and then it looks like we have Griffin Jones and Jillian Harvey online. Here. I'll sit here so you have a better view. Um, and if you like, I can pull up um, the budget that you sent over. Sure. That'd be a good idea. Okay. All right. So we have the Human Rights Commission with us um, to talk about their request for an additional $25. Is that, is that right? That's on right. That, on top of your budget that you have been given the 7500 right? That's right. So introduce yourself and then tell us why you want to do that extra money. Sure. Uh, my name is Drake Pusey. I'm from Precinct 13. Uh, I'm one of the co-chairs this year for the Human Rights Commission. My fellow co-chair uh, Griffin is on Zoom. I believe uh, Jillian and Colleen may also be on Zoom. Um, we uh, received the request to uh, submit our budgetary details. So we did that um, and we took it as an opportunity to address a longstanding constraint um, that we've been facing with our budget. I can give you the background story on that or um, you may have specific questions. How about a short, I know, you know, I can give you a short overview. Yeah. So um, I started on the commission in 2019 in November um, and Prior to that, we have been getting an annual budget of 7,500. Um, within a few months of me starting, the pandemic happened in March, the school shut down. Um, we have, from a budgetary standpoint, we have benefited from uh, the shutdown of in-person events, um, going virtual and all of that. And we've, we've survived fine for the last few years. As we are coming out of um, those restrictions, um, the, we really want to bring back a lot more of our in-person events um, because they are so beneficial um, to bringing the community together and having people actually see everyone else as a fellow human uh, community member. Um, and so uh, we, we plan to um, do A, more events um, and be prepared with a essentially a kit and protocol for um, very sort of, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, short notice events like vigils for anticipated, um, uh, not to be pessimistic, but, but tragic events and addressing them, things like that. Um, the constraint that we wanted to address when we had this opportunity to come in front of you is um, we have never had well, in recent memory, we have not had dedicated official email addresses for the commissioners. And we've been using, you know, for the sake of compartmentalizing our communications, we've created, you know, separate Gmail and Yahoo accounts of our own. Um, and that has some negative um, effects, both optically, because, you know, when you see a commissioner talking to you as, you know, mine is drakep.ahrc at gmail.com. Um, a, that seems fairly unofficial. It doesn't reinforce that we are a town entity that, that exists. I think our awareness could be, would benefit a lot from, from um, more improvement there. But it also has real um, technical detriments. We had, um, uh, we had to reclaim our MailChimp account, which is what we use to send our newsletters. And MailChimp refused to recognize any of us as official owners of the Human Rights Commission because, you know, my, my account, my, my Gmail address looks like a, a scammer, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we've never gotten that account back and ended up having to go to a different vendor and start over again. Um, so this is not, um, you know, if we wanted a sort of inflation adjustment, I'm sure you could do that um, formulaically. So this is not a request for that. This is a request to um, address 
uh, the budgetary constraints on on our ability to do events. Um, we could not, with our current budget, we could not um, do this um, sort of email infrastructure improvement because that cost will be carrying year to year. Um, so um, I can give you a rundown of what we expect to be spending our money on if you would like to go through that itemization. Um, okay. So um, I can talk through um, two aspects of this, the uh, anticipated expenditures for the rest of the current fiscal year um, and the anticipated budget for 2025, which was how the the, the conversation started, I guess. But um, we have um, a variety of events um, coming up. We have a uh, farmer's market. When that opens up, we'll be tabling there. Um, there's at least one more resource fair coming up. Um, we're, we're glad that, um, you know, town days are back, but that's, the, for this fiscal year, that's done. Juneteenth is coming up. So we have uh, a bunch of events like this. Uh, the, the rate for, for town facilities has gone up, so that's increased our costs. Um, and we, we um, like I said, we are currently planning um, what a sort of quickly producible vigil would entail. And so we're working out, um, you know, the handles or buttons or the various kit items we would need to have on hand and ready for that. Um, so that sort of inventory, uh, we have um, program and event materials. Some of it looks like office supplies, some of it's more customized. That's another um, inventory item. Uh, we want to do a small program for um, the um, Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, we are planning uh, largely coming out of the, the situation in Israel and Gaza, um, a series of programming around anti-hate, which will also address anti-Semitism, which is one of, it is right now the leading cause of um, human rights complaints in Arlington. Um, Juneteenth will involve um, food, music, celebration. Um, and we are woefully um, behind, in my opinion, on training for the commissioners, um, both in terms of active bystander training, uh, mediation training, um, recognizing hate crimes, a lot of that training, um, we as volunteers, um, especially because we've had a bunch of new commissioners come on in the last year or two, um, we're behind on some of that. So those are the costs we expect for the rest of fiscal 2024. And then what we submitted to you is um, the budget for fiscal 2025. Our budget is usually bucketed um, in parallel to our working groups. We have sort of fixed costs for the communications group. We have expected costs for the events and outreach groups. Um, and then um, other groups are more about coordinating with the school system and housing and things like that. But uh, the, the net new part is mainly to get this additional IT component of seats on our Google uh, contract. Right now we have one uh, Gmail address, which allows us to have a shared file server for the commission. And if we add more seats, then we can all have email addresses. I think, um, you know, we thought through, well, is this cheaper than yeah, convincing the town IT to give us Outlook accounts. And I think, um, I don't know exactly how much a seat on Outlook costs. Um, I know Google is among the cheapest, but I think what really tips the balance is we as we can volunteer our own time to admin this Gmail system. Whereas if we needed anything fixed on the town system, it would cost um, town IT and vendor um, time. So the fact that we can do our admin for free, I think tips the cost balance. Uh, all right, questions. First, I have a couple of questions. Yes. So have, have you talked to the town about town email addresses? Um, or have you just chosen not to go that, that route? It has never been presented to us as a possibility. 
um, in terms of actually getting seats. Um, the commission has never had town email addresses in the 30 years. It looks like, yeah, she'll just raise her Just to, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I do, before you were chair the first time, Drake, it was something I did try to do. <laughs> um, and we, at that point, weren't using Microsoft. And so with the old system, the answer was no. Um, and then as we transitioned to Microsoft, which also took longer than expected, um, the answer was still not right now. There are so many boards and commissions, like really the managing of it would not be feasible at this time, um, but it's on my to do to continue to push and rebring that up as a conversation, because um, I personally don't think it should be a flat no, but we have been told no in the past. <laughs> So, so you are working on it, mm -hmm. or that's all right. And <clears throat> what type of support does the DEI department provide the Human Rights Commission? And I'm particularly interested in training. Is that something that you you reference that you would need? Is that something that the department can provide the Human Rights Commission? I can answer that as well. Yep. Um, at this time, we we my <laughs> division has not. I don't provide specific training. Typically we work with consultants, whether it's for staff, primarily for staff, um, because I don't have the capacity as one person in the division doing that to provide that training. Um, but I have partnered with other groups in the past to provide bystand, active bystander training, um, finding them locally, partnering with them. But then the commission also has footed that bill for whatever the time is, it's usually two to three hours. Um, but I certainly work with them to find different partners that can provide the training. Thank you. And my last question before running up to everyone else is in FY23, did you have a surplus? Jillian, do you have the answer to that? Yes, there was um, a slight surplus 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 there was also a bit of confusion on our end because we didn't realize that um a purchase order had been opened so fy23 was a little messy for us but funds that got carried over um will be used up this year all right um questions um anyone have questions peggy and then al jones and then Lynn. Thank you. Um, so what was your budget in FY24? 75. 75. 75. 75. Oh. Oh, John? Oh, thank you. I, I guess I was just wondering where the $2,500 for the uh, yeah. email addresses and shared server came from. That sounds way too high to me. I, I, I do these things. Um, it should be about six, six bucks a person. It is either Google or Microsoft. Yeah, I think now it's twelve seventy five a person for workspace business standard, um, which for thirteen people plus the extra sort of admin seat is um, calculator. I think that's how we derive the number. Um, Go ahead. That each month? That, that's probably more than you need. That, that, that's not going to have a 1500 or 1200. Um, for, for, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm just saying I, that, that number's too high. Okay. And we can talk about it later. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, the number I'm seeing right now is. Let me compare it to the number in here. Oh, you don't need a separate okay. admin sheet. You don't need to spend extra for a shared server. That one comes with the six bucks of the package. So and we can talk about it later, but I wouldn't say about how it works in the line. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I use it for my own business. Um, at least one of the seats will have to be the 1275 to enable the team drives because the cheap tier, they, 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 they do team Microsoft drive, but maybe the free. rest of them can be. Right. Um, uh, I, I would say just yeah. going to Microsoft anyway because that's what the town uses and it'll, it'll sync up better. We can talk that's about something that like yeah, yep. Annie. Thank you. So um, I'm just speculating here, but you know, 
this question of using a town email, given the work that you're doing, it would seem to me that having your own domain name would be kind of important because people who don't trust the town may feel like they can't send information to a town email address, um, whereas they could feel like they could send it to you. And there is also this, this issue of what is FOIA-able and what is not. And certainly every town address is not only FOIA-able, but it's not really private. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's owned by the town, the emails are owned by the town. Yeah, our website domain, sorry, can I interrupt? Yeah. Um, our, our website domain is um, ArlingtonHumanRights.org, and the email addresses are intended to be the right, same. Right, that's what I'm saying, yep. is that segregating yep. your emails from the town servers yep. is actually an advantage. Yeah, I mean, I agree. you know, money notwithstanding. Um, so, okay, that was my only question is, you know, were you thinking about that when you debated this question of your own emails versus piggybacking on the town? Right. Yeah, I, I think maybe uh, human rights work has put us in a mindset of imperfect situations and const and constraints. And so we're, we're always trying to do the best with what we can. Um, so. You done any? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so on this thread uh, of FOIA, um, I mean, the town would be still paying for this. So I would believe that your the emails even over here would be uh foyable within the same rules. Now I realize there may be sensitive issues and presumably you would talk to town council about where the boundaries are on that. But I think is you you're not completely shielded. Yeah, we treat them as FOIA foyable. Yeah. Um one other question is just how many complaints have you had to say last year? Um, any semitism is a large bulk of a large amount. Oh, I wish I had our annual report easily accessible, but um, in the annual report, we count it out every year. Um, right. So during, you know, when I first started, well, I started right after the, some of the, the, the arson event mm -hmm. happened, right? Um, and then for a year or so, um, Black Lives Matter related um, incidents sort of took over the top spot, but um, Unfortunately, recently, um, anti-Semitism is covered us. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. Okay. Do you have a ballpark, like a dozen a year, two dozen a year? Um, oh, you a hand up to okay. Jillian? Do you have an answer? Um, for incidents, for the last year, there were 26. Um, and that was shared between human rights and the police department. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. Does the, so the increase in 25, that isn't just for the emails, that also includes the training and increased budget for events or no? Yes. Uh, um, and whatever we can save on, I mean, we would love to spend more on events and less on IT. Um, if we can make that happen, we would do that. Um, but yeah, it's, we will, um, we plan to use it for events if we have extra. And from my perspective, the training is important. Yes. If you have new members who haven't gone through the training, that's problematic. Yeah, we have, you know, we have the baseline required trainings, right. like non, um, you know, the ethics training and things, but. Anything else? Any other questions? So, a really tiny one. Um, so, what are the costs for events? Are they uh, rental space? Are they a speakers or? It includes um, space. Um, I hear the term gray bill a lot. Um, it includes um, Sodium, foods, refreshments, okay. um, and speaker um, honorariums. So, what's the total request now? Yes. Total ten thousand. Ten thousand. Any other questions, Charlie? Where is your uh, annual Human Rights Commission report? Where is it? Is it on the website? Um, I don't know. Where do all of the annual reports sit in the end? Uh, Jillian, yeah. 
You can go, Colleen. Um, this it'll be ready I, by town meeting, but I think it's still getting put together and printed. What about last, last year? year. Sorry? Last year's annual report. It's available in the whole, like with all of the other <laughs> departments. Um, what's that document? It's the annual report. It's a document. Right. I don't know. That it lives on the happen. website. All of them yeah. live there. The Governments, three CEI commissions governments. are within Health and Human Services. That's where all of the annual reports are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you. And right. we will be in touch. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Let's. Quickly do the minutes for the last minute. Anyone have any uh, revisions, corrections um, to the minutes, Rebecca? Um, there's a transcription error, I think. Sorry, I'm trying to, trying to pull up my copy. Um, the one referring to recreation for 5A playing fields. Yep. Um, it's 69, 950. 950, okay. Um, and then I suppose you could change that was received from user fees, but that's just uh, okay. That's just a suggestion. But the nine five two. Thank you. Anything else? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected? So moved. Your second. Second. All, right. all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Yeah. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. And the affirmative, any opposed, no opposed, and one abstention. I would say two because Dean is out of the room at the moment. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, two abstention. So is that about 13? 15, yes, and two is the one. Okay, 15, zero. All right. Um, let's do budget. Um, solid waste. Okay. Okay. Uh, so big picture on solid waste is the clarity we are all hoping for has eluded us so far. Hmm. So basically, um, you know, we're in the second year of a three-year contract. Years follow our fiscal year, so we're halfway through or something. Um, we've had Republic for the last year and a half. Republic had a proposal to us to that would meant that we wouldn't have gone out to bid, and Mike and Charlotte decided it did not make sense to accept the proposal without going out to bid. So we and Republic are in the running, but just we need the bid process. So um, that's what they're doing now. We don't know the numbers. Uh, we, we might hope that the uh, bids will come back in a couple months and we will have clarity on both what it looks like and the money by the summer. That gives us some time to do or, or them to do outreach to the public because we will be seeing changes. So it's pretty much guaranteed that there will be toters. That's what everyone mm -hmm. does. That is going to be a cost effective way to handle weights in Arlington. Um, you know, um, it's it's it, it's it's hard to hire people for things that don't involve toters because just hiring somebody to lift heavy things all the time is it's just hard for public to get people. Could you so, say that word? Republicans having a hard time hiring people. Toters. To oh yeah, oh sorry. Toters are 
those, um, you see them off in other town. They are standard garbage things with a metal bar they can be across the back. Mechanically lifted. They can be mechanically listed. So okay. it's just much easier to hire somebody to drive a truck working this mechanical arm than to have people lifting things. Um, on page uh, like 19 of the capital planning. Uh, look at that, yeah. Yeah, so because because cap there is currently 750,000 in the capital planning budget. Um, another remaining question is that we have not decided yet whether to go to the state to ask for some a grant that would help to buy these toters. In order to get that mm -hmm. particular grant, we have to commit to having uh, receptacles no larger than 35 um, pounds. pounds. 35 gallons. Gallons, gallons, gallons. Yes, gallons, gallons. 35 gallons. So if you've seen these along the street, they're the smaller ones. They're still mm -hmm. standard size, but the smaller than standard size. We will also be going out for a grant, but there's no restriction there on um, the recycling containers. So there's a bunch of money out there for helping us to buy the recycling containers. Um, but whether we get additional help besides our own money to buy the main um, item is depends on, on whether we restrict it to 35 gallons. Okay, so uh, general stuff, um, solid waste, responsible garbage, recycling, yard waste, construction material, food scraps, hazardous waste. Um, they also operate this swap set, which is very popular. I think we've increased it over the last two years. Uh, I have some numbers in the proposal I gave you of, of uh, solid waste, recycling, yard waste. Interestingly, and I don't know if this is a trend, uh, solid waste has gone down this last year. May or may not be a trend. Basically, we had many years where it hovered around 12,000, so it might just be a one-off, or it could be something interesting. Um, we pay two costs for garbage. We pay currently pay to pick up the garbage, and we pay to dump garbage, but not recycle. That's going to change. We are going to have to pay to dump recycling in the future. Under the old contract that we negotiated many years ago, um, it was just, you know, Companies were getting money from the recycling. They were they had value that they don't have anymore, and so we could have this situation where, you know, they they pick it up still not be a cost, but they we didn't have to pay to dump it. That just won't be true anymore. We know the next contract will include that. Um, okay, so just to go over through the the numbers. Um, the first number, the recycling fifty two twenty four is a cost for our recycling center. Um, 52.42 is the solid waste collection that's just by contract. That's a we know that that's a, a set number that we know each year as they finish the contract. Uh, yard waste is varies and depends on what we pick up, it does goes up and down. Solid waste disposal also varies depending on how many mm -hmm. these tipping fees, how much we, we use. Residual disposal, uh, this is again one of those things where. Work, when we're fully staffed, we pay more for residual disposal because we fix more sidewalks, we do more, you know, waste, um, what's the, the catch bins things. So when the numbers have gone down the last couple of years, it's just because we haven't had the staff. Um, feed scrap division, we, food scrap, I think is what it should be. <laughs> um, so uh, that's to pay for the program high school, which is enormously successful. So we went from three big bins to, to one when we when we instituted the program. Uh, to pay for the bins at DPW and to pay for two neighborhood bins now. When we talked last time, I mentioned that they were trying to extend the, the neighborhood program. Uh, Charlotte feels that since that was so long ago pre-pandemic that she really needs to go back to Park and Rec to get the, to reauthorize the locations. Um, she's still interested in doing that. She doesn't have a lot of capacity because she doesn't have this assistance right now. Um, and there, there's a feeling that there's less pressure on this because there was a feeling at one point that the state was about to institute something that would require us to do it. And the feeling now is it is in the future probably, but it's not imminent. And so, so the feeling that we have to do this. Um, last year, I remember we talked about whether these programs were being advertised well enough. And her, Charlotte's feeling is, she doesn't really want to advertise it because she doesn't have the capacity. Like there's just, just not big enough. So if we advertise it and everyone drops their stuff out, oh, there just isn't enough space there yet. Um, 
So she still really sees it as a pilot program to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, as I said, we have a new contractor, so that things are changing. Um, but long-term plan, she would like to expand it. No, no plans in the immediate future. Um, I think I mentioned to you last year that the public interest is that they're losing a million dollars a year on our contract. Mike wasn't sure if that was real or not, but basically what it seemed like they wanted and, and everyone agreed that made sense is to not tip in North Andover, but to tip in Roxbury instead. And what that did is that trucks that had been idle, idling for hours, waiting because the, the, the convo is so, so long, no longer have to do that. They can just go in, quickly drop it off, um, and that they're done. Um, we, downside of that is that we don't have as much visibility into whether they're getting the right numbers right. We have to trust them. But the upside for everybody is that there's less idling tracks. There is, um, they are not paying as much overtime because when the trucks were hanging out for three hours, they pay overtime and everyone's just a little bit less groggy about the whole thing. So um, let's see what else I have. Um, grants. Oh, oh um, new mattress disposal. You, you know that this is a new state law that um, we people can't just throw mattresses out, out anymore. They There's, can't, like, like four houses up the street for every? So you have, you can do it two ways. So you can go to the town and buy and, and pay to have it picked up. Yeah, they didn't do that. I don't think you can be picked up without that. I mean, it's state law. Like it's it's really it really yeah, but the, but it's possible that they don't have to have a sticker that they went online and say I don't know how to have this. So so there's two ways to do it. Once you can you can go online and pay for it to be picked up, and the second way is that you can drop it off yourself. And when people drop it off themselves, it's a, the amount we charge them is a little bit more than it charges, and when they pick it up, the amount we charge them is a little less than than it costs us. But Charlotte Vale is it all equals out and it's basically net right now. Uh, big, big question. Um, the waste division position is still vacant. Now, the, we need this waste division, uh, division position for a bunch of different reasons. Charlotte didn't feel the need of it much. Last year, so it is more this year, they just offered it to somebody who eventually turned it down. There's a lot of negotiation back and forth. Um, one is that um, just to do the operations, especially something like the shop swap set. And it's been mentioned going recently to the town, you know, WF things and how efficiently it was run. Well, that is Charlotte by herself, but she has no help, right? <laughs> so having somebody else to help would be great. Second is that we potentially have a cheaper contract if our garbage is cleaner. People aren't throwing out things that they shouldn't throw out. Um, and then third, long term, and this is not, this is sort of in the background of everyone's mind, Charlotte's not doing this forever. So potentially that person might move up someday mm -hmm. if it's the right person. So uh, that is why we need somebody. Um, and, oh, and I think that is it for things I wanted to cover. Okay, well, first of all, do you have a recommendation? Oh, yeah, sorry. Not in front of me. Take me down. I can get some papers and put this way. Yes. Uh, recommendation for. Four million six hundred forty-four thousand nine hundred seventy-three, which is a lot of money. Yes. Is there a second? Second. All right. So questions. Um, I'll pass the, uh, Rebecca. Annie. Okay. I know I missed this. So the solid waste collection of three million, Bob, that contract is up. So we are in the second year of a three-year contract. Okay, so, so and it, it follows our fiscal year. So, so actually, yeah, so it follows our fiscal year. So, right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, and the solid waste disposal, do we have a contract for that or is that just pay to throw? I don't think, yeah, there's doesn't, I don't think there's a contract pay to throw. Yeah. yeah That's a good question whether the rates are set yearly. That is a good question. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Okay. Rebecca? Um, I had a, thank you. I had a question about the prospect of moving from the North Andover facility to yep. the Roxbury facility. Is the Roxbury facility also a um, self incinerator? It's, it, no, it's a weighing station. 
So okay. it's actually, did they just hold it? Okay. And then they tip it in the same way they would tip it. So okay. just a facility to weigh. It's just a process of it's like a process of so, right. so ultimately it goes to So we're not area. actually dumping extra garbage in our spray, which would look bad. <laughs> we're just processing it. Okay. So the end of the, it's a transfer station, yeah. I see. yeah. My question was sort of at the end of the day, we're then paying about this. We should expect to pay the same amount to actually process the trash, which is it's the same. Permanent. It should be the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then and that's a term in the contract that when we negotiate the contract, we specify, we've been specifying that they need to take it to North Handover and we would leave it open. We had to negotiate with them last year. Yeah. So I assume it potentially was in the original contract because it, it was a back and forth negotiation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if we were to, if the town in the negotiation were to allow them flexibility about where to take it. That's what they did. The, the idea would be that not that we would save money, but that they would lose less money on us. So, so the historic thing about our contract is that they knew walking in that they were going to lose money. Okay. And they, uh, so we had gotten this very, very, very good contract a bunch of years ago with our previous um, caller. Republic was interested in buying them. And to make their offer sort of work, they had to buy a lot of people. So there was an incentive for them to potentially take over Arlington even while they knew they were going to lose money. So, but then they felt like they were losing more money than they thought. Yeah. And then so that's when they came to negotiate with us. Our potentially being flexible does not save us money. It just it doesn't save us the contract to go forward. It means that your garbage gets picked up. No one's as cranky about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Annie, then Michael, then Grant, then Charlie. Um, so when you say that we don't know whether or not the reduction in solid waste is a trend, you mean? We, as in Mike, doesn't know? Yeah, nothing else. Okay. Because Cause it just happened this year. It just happened this yeah, year. Yeah, this is the first year that we sort of saw a dip. Yeah, I mean, the trend over the last 20 years has been that it's been going down. Right. When I looked at, like, the last six years, it hasn't okay. been. Um, so that's, right. yeah. Because the, the first I, I think trend that's right. was recycling. When you take metal and glass, yes. out, and you pay by the pound, yes. you reduce the weight. The second drop. When we moved to single stream, there was a drop. Yes. Yes, for sure. For the sure. The second drop is likely food scraps for diversion because many, many more people are using a composter. Yeah. Are hiring a compost service to pick up. And that's the second heaviest thing in your draft. Yeah, they, they don't know enough information about that. As you may have seen, there's yeah. a question on that in our annual time survey. Yeah. But of course, only a portion of people answer the annual time survey. So, well, I don't know. It's interesting that solid waste is going down and yard waste is going up. Yes, that's my question. Yes. Actually, so they, yeah. uh, there was a discussion that, that they thought yard mm -hmm. waste in general was going down as a trend. Mm -hmm. So I don't, uh, I don't also don't know exactly what's going on with the one year. In terms of weight? Yes, in terms of weight, yeah. 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 Anything else? Um, yeah. No, except that, you know, when you say that we don't know anything about the future numbers, then you might mm -hmm. not surprise. They yeah, they have negotiated. So, yeah, we do know this year's numbers. So yeah, we know this year's numbers. Right. Scare yeah. me there for a minute. Sorry, sorry. I, he has a budget. No, no, no. <laughs> we're good on passing a budget, but I mean, I think many people in this room have been anxious to hear what the new numbers will be, and the answer is they don't have them. Yeah. We're going to know until we have a contract. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I had a hard time hearing you. Uh, can you explain again what residual disposal is? Oh, you're talking about um the construction waste? Oh yeah. Uh that is disposal when they do the projects, small projects. So they replace a little bit of the sidewalk or a catch basin. They have to throw that out. And they can't just throw it in the window of trash. And there's it's this interesting dynamic that happens with all DPW stuff that when the when they can't fully staff things, they don't do as much projects and they can't. And this, these, these budget items go down. So, so that number exactly. rises and falls on the volume of projects the town has done. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, looking for a simple answer on this, I think. Solid waste disposal, non-contracted. Trend is going down. Can you please simply tell me why? Let me simplify it. Why the budget goes up 11.62%. So we have a negotiated increase when, so the, the, the vast majority of the solid waste 
budget is the um, the solid waste collection, 5242. Uh, no, the solid is by... waste disposal. That's uh, 5276. Yes, Last year's budget was 1075973. This year's budget uh, is 1 million, 1.2 million. That's an increase of 11.62%. Yeah, so this is a question. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's in the contract. I don't. So, so what. It sounds like it's in the contract. Well, so what, what is does vary is we only pay for what we did, right? So if we did less, we pay less. We did more, we did more. So but we it, expect it, it's possible, more. I think probably likely, but I have to get confirmation okay. that. That the number for for every ton is how much we pay is set by the contract, and I will get confirmation on that. Yeah, but there, the contract is designed to go up. I'm sorry, I didn't think it was contract. I think it is. We have a three year contract. Oh. Yeah, it is. It's a three year contract. So the con even though the rate's gone down, I mean the spending the trend has gone down. The contract, as that's why I thought Alan, I, I you know, must have just heard this heard that. Mm -hmm. So in the contract, it's going up 11.62%. We have no control of it. It's contract. Is that inaccurate or is it? We have control over the tipping. If we all throw out less garbage, we don't pay as much. Right. I yeah, we have that. control so, over that. Is, is he expecting but, us to pay to tip more? I, I just don't. But what we don't have control over potentially is how much we get, we get charged per ton. If we reduce our tonnage, we pay less. So Mike is expecting more tonnage. That's why it's increasing. Uh, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. I just don't understand why it's. I, I think this 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 um the, the dip in 2023. No, no, I'm talking yeah. about the, the budget increase. Why is there an increase? I, I think it's based on, on historical trends because the dip in 2023 is a one-year dip. There's no assumption that, that we're going to see that dip again necessarily. Oh, I thought there's a trend. Right, well, no, there, it sort of looks like a one year dip, and so we don't know. We know what it looks like. So we don't know, but we suspect it's going up at 11.5%. That's under 25 I think based uh, on the historical trend. Yeah. Okay, based on historical trend. It, right. Is that 250 not part of the overnight? So, you know, that is far, like, that's part of the override. It's supposed to be for the new contract. Right, this extra two fifty. Of course, we don't know what the new contract is, and we're going to have to spend a lot more than that two fifty. So, Mike was like, "Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's a nice two fifty you have there, but it's not going to do anything for us." We're when... trying to build up the house and to be prepared for the yes, right. yes, that's what it sounds like. Right. That's, right. that's what it sounds like. And you know, the manager gets what three and a half percent, three and a quarter percent increase across the entire budget. He should. He needs to put it where it's again. going to be. Well, when we know, I mean, we'll know next next summer exactly <laughs> like what the hundred will look like. Yeah. We'll basically know the numbers for three years. Pretty close. So. All right. Charlie and then John. <clears throat> so my, my question, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. My question is related. Uh, I, I just noticed that both the solid waste collection and the solid waste disposal are increasing at about a rate of 8% a year. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, these, if, uh, what's the name of the uh, collection again? Uh, Republic. Republic. Republic, yeah. Republic, yeah. Uh, they're, they, they're complaining about a contract that increases at 8% a year? So, if you remember, they we had this amazingly good contract with the previous caller, JR, right? That was like, they were also losing money, but they had given us such a low budget yeah. deal. And then when Republic bought it out, some of that sort of really good deal was sort of kept with the new the new contract. So these all these what I understand is all these companies have been losing money on us the last few years. But we don't think that's going to continue. It certainly won't once the contract is. Well, the next contract, they're not going to lose money on us. Right. They're going to, yeah. Yeah, there were, there were right. real, there were reasons that they were okay losing money or that they made a bad, you know, deal with us <laughs> that caused them to lose money that just will not be in play anymore. So we know how uh, it, in the current year, it says 2.8 million, 2,884,000. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're halfway through the year. 
What is this, we, we should know what that number is going to be. Oh, what do you think of our? Yeah, so I have I do have actuals on that. See, this is last year's actuals. Let's see, I actually find that. Let's see. Cycling service, um, two point nine million. Oh, that's worried that that might not be the right thing. Uh, I just what it looks like. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for this. I do have them all here. Uh, so, anyways, okay. Uh, so our actual year to date is a little over four million. Jeez. Four million four six thousand for collection and disposal. Yeah. So, yeah. And there is, I mean, when I've looked at the actuals, they were a little scurry. There's some timing issue about when POs come in. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we have a contract. This is what the contract so, looks like. So, when the numbers are a little different, it's a timing issue. So, yeah, my, through the I year, asked what the unit date was. Yeah. Sorry. That's and you case. said it's a little over 4 million. Yeah. But the budget's only 4 million for those two categories for the full year. Right. So, that leads, okay, this is what we were told. Oh, some of these are conferences. Um, uh, do you? So I have to go back and look at so um so the curbside collection looks pretty close. So it's 2.780 for the numbers that are in there. So it's now now some of these sometimes when they do the actual they've encumbered some money. So I don't know. I don't feel like we have a real big, pic clear picture until after the year is closed, because that, that's what, when I've seen these, some of these numbers. Though certainly true in facilities, they had encumbered a bunch of them. They knew they were going to pay, and they were in the act. But I can tell you, you know, what I, last I year looks say, like, and the, speaking for myself, and this is not yeah. speaking speaking. You, Jennifer, but I think when we're talking about a three million, four million dollar budget, we should be able to understand what the actual cost is. And if they can't tell us the actual cost, we shouldn't support the budget. So, but we mean that actuals. When I, I feel that the most valuable thing is usually the prior year actuals, which don't know, as we know, always match the budget book. When you look at snap and snapshot and time actuals. I always found that there's less priority there. But they're paying money out, right? Well, because some of that is encumbered. That's why I found there's less priority. That's what I go, I've, I've seen that again and again. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if this, it. are you saying this is not for another budget? That's what I've seen. In, yeah, I mean, the, the actuals in, in the budget book are in line Which, with the the budget request for 25. But it's not like it's not that they're going to double this because they've only been six months because they've encumbered some amount. So that's why it's just it's not you can't just take a crap in time and double it and say oh we're going to save anything. That's not how how it works. I don't again I, I I'm not sure that's how this budget usually works. I'm not sure if other budgets work that way or not. Anything else, Charlie? No, thank you. But no. no one's happy about spending this much money. I get it. I, no, I really it's, it's understand not a question that. Of spending this much money. It's a question of knowing what we're spending. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they can't tell us, we shouldn't support the budget. Well, they can. They can tell. We have a contract, right? So right. the $3 million, it's a contract you'll match, right? That's, that's my contract. And again, the, the budget request is in line with the last two year actions. Right. John. Yeah, I'm also trying. Thank you, sir. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. And Jennifer, I, I'm still struggling with this whole thing where you talked about how Republic was losing money on us. But the, um, the contract is going up 8%. Right, that's what we're just talking about. Yeah. So are they still losing money? With I think they are still losing money on us. Yeah. So what I understand, I mean, uh, people who've been in this room for a lot longer can probably speak to it more. But JR uh, recycling was whatever JR um, was had given us was a new company at the time when first went up had given us this really long contract and it turned out they were losing money 
And then they tried to renegotiate with us. And we said, wait, this is a contract. <laughs> this is what you agreed to. So, so we didn't negotiate that. So we got a really great deal for years and years. Then Republic came and they had an incentive. They needed to buy us basically to make the deal that they were trying to buy all the clients and that they bought them all was a better deal. So they were willing to lose money. So, so yes, so, so, it, but there's, we've had, we have to negotiate contracts where it goes up to try to capture some of that, right? Um, so that we're not, so each year they don't lose more and more money, right? They're trying to, they're trying to catch up, right? But they are still losing money on us. Yeah. Even with eight percent, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think next year, when we look back at this discussion, we'll be saying, "Don't we wish that was only an eight yeah. percent?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, we yeah. are going to see. We're going to see the shopping. real, true yeah. cost, it is, it is even shopping. though it's going to be cheaper than if we had had a contract doing the same kind of garbage question we do right now, yeah. right? I mean, the toters will help save some money, but we're going to see the true cost. Yeah. Okay. Garbage down. Okay. Thank you, Josh, and then um, Thomas. Thank you. Um, I just have a, a question about sort of the town manager. When they're negotiating a contract like at this scale, was that Mike who's negotiating it, or are there other players besides the public? How does that work? Uh, so I understand. So Mike doesn't do any salary negotiations, but I think he's very much involved in these kinds of negotiations. I assume the town manager as well. I mean, it seems like that but that might be a different skill than yeah and he and charlotte <clears throat> agreed to they they actually made the decision to go out to bid but evaluating the bids i don't know i can ask well i think i think the fact that we have such a great contract for so long is a testament to his ability right to, mm -hmm. to negotiate at least that those rounds um so wait and see for next year i'll toss the speed and then i'll jump Okay, just a, our contract with Republic is for solid waste collection. Uh, is that correct? Our contract is, is solid waste collection. So I assume that the, the, that 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 the tipping fees as well. You're saying no? I don't know the tipping fees. Right. Yeah, the, the Republic collects the well, stuff. Republic collects the stuff. Yes. But it goes up to North Andover, and um, or Rockland, that's yeah. a separate deal. We don't pay Republic to, to dispose of it. We don't pay Republic to dispose of it. Yeah. So okay. I don't I don't know if that's by contract or not. Okay. Or so that's the Republic just that... contract is going up at four point three three percent, not eight percent. Right, right. So the so the so the fees, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Right. So the fees for tipping you're saying are whatever the facility can charge us. Is that that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't, but also I don't know if that's a contractual, I don't know about that. I'll, I'll I can find that out. Or it's pay, or it's, it changes these months, or it's like a yearly thing. I don't know. But yeah. so Republic is just a four point three. The disposal is it's less than that, actually. Less and like that. I said, my guess is he's putting as much money in here as possible because the next year we're going to need it. Right. Al Jones. Well, I, since Andy had to leave, I'll channel over and ask because there any discussion of pays you throw in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good, good, good question. Um, so as we receive the bids back. There will be possibilities thrown at us. Like, for example, do we continue to collect unlimited number of couches, right? And, and large objects, or will there be some sort of restriction per household with the, the extra money attached? And as they start seeing those proposals, that will be a decision they'll make. So they don't make they haven't made it today, but but it turns out that, you know. Having a restriction on the number of catches you can throw out really saves us a lot of money. There'll be discussion. I mean, the good thing is using the toters, what some towns are doing are actually weigh, you can weigh them as you dump them. So you can, you can, heard, you can get to the pounds. We just per heard, episode. I wasn't sure if this was in this one or another. Uh, Mike said that wasn't true, <laughs> but you can't weigh them. Well, it is true. But okay. <laughs> but, no, just like in general, if there was a, a page to throw a discussion. Okay. Yeah. That was, that, that's one discussion. The other discussion is, Potentially raising um, the cost for the extra bags that are now being used by some businesses, um, and they've been two dollars and something cents for a long time, and they want to raise it to three. Potentially, um, that would be relevant for people because we have the smaller toters. Then, 
individuals, not just businesses, might have to file these tags. Anything else? All right, Topher, Grant, and Charlie. Okay, so just you mentioned because something we just mentioned. So the toters, if they're smaller, they're still maybe more limited. I guess it's what three barrels these days per week per household. Um, so I think one, it would be one one thirty five so, gallon oh, so per house, we, which is actually uh, still above the household average. I and they've got yeah, they analyze the household average. But it then, would be a it would be a change. Yeah, right, there's a question of whether okay. they're so the benefit would be they get the state grant. But the disadvantage is that the real estate yeah. So the question is the way that. Yeah. And then I just an observation. I mean, this is one of the few, if not the only, service that absolutely has yeah. kind of gas. Yeah. Yeah. Grant. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Back to the um, 35 bin thing. Is, um, uh, what happens if there's more than you know, the, I understand the average, but yeah. you know, the average is the mean. Yeah, so what happens when people have you know, like you know, double the garbage or something like that? They have a big party, or things, yeah. So, themselves. individuals would then have to buy bags and they would sell them in like Wanamaker hardware or something, would sell these bags that you would then be able to buy. And so, currently, they're less, they're two dollars and something, and there's been talk about raising them to three. So, that's a rapid amount of money. How would that work with the totals though? So you would have, um, you know, wouldn't be entirely mechanical, right? You'd uh, have to have somebody come over and lift out that bag, but that would just be one of the ways services would be done. There would be less less people. There would be less. You wouldn't bags. have to. Have, people wouldn't have to lift as much, right? It wouldn't be the same thing. You only have one guy up. Right. Okay. Right. Good. Thank you, Charlie. I just like to comment that in 2022, our public services Inc. had a annual revenue of 13.5 billion dollars and a profit of about um one point almost 1.5 billion are they billion 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 billion. Billion. yes and it's so much yeah. so <laughs> <like that. laughs> i mean I, we, there are several companies so, out there so we, we we don't know if we'll go with for public or not no I, yeah. i'm just going back to knowing what the costs are yeah. you know we're they're not losing money they're giving us a story What's the uh, one, the $1 million dollars that what they said it, Mike was skeptical about that. He believed that there was some money, but he was skeptical about that. Any other questions on the solid waste budget? All right, we have a motion that's been seconded. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor of $4,644,973. Say aye. 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 Are you opposed? Opposed. So all in favor, raise your hand. Fifteen. Four. Shouldn't there be oh 15 because Annie left. Annie's yeah, there, yeah. Um opposed. One and no abstentions. Do you want to do zero waste? Um, I'd like to um request. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. I know we still have natural resources to do. We we'll do, do that I, another. We'll do that. Another. I have some information that I haven't formatted properly yet, and I'll get that. Carol. Okay. So first, before we do reclass, we're going to do. Although you can pull it up, we're going to do the HR budget, which is on page thirty-two and thirty-three. And you can complain if you want, but there aren't any changes in this budget. So if we go down to um, the salaries, yes, there are significant increases there. However, there are lots of steps and lots of longevity, and we don't have a whole lot of influence on that, except in the director of human resources, because those changes are done by the town manager, not by a set amount. Um, and she had a reclass last year. Um, and it was approved by external sources as well as internal sources. Um, and so there's been an increase in the max 
and her new pay is still well below the max. So that's the salary detail. And if we go up to the budget detail, you'll see it is 0% across the board. And if you're wondering what on earth 50,000 gets you in trainings, a certain amount of that is assessment um, for police um, because of the way the civil service exam works and what they have to be assessed on um, before they're hired and or before they increase um, their rank. And David, if anyone has any questions, David might be better to answer that than I, because um, we've been through it, or maybe he isn't. <laughs> um, and the other thing that is, is for training for uh, mostly HR. Um, there's a few other things in there, but most training occurs with each department budget. So, um, so. Do you have recommendations? So my recommendation is that we approve the budget at, we, we approve the budget below offsets or above? Uh, below. 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 Okay. Um, 393533. Is there a second? Second. All right. Questions for Carolyn? I see none. All right. Um, all in favor of 393533, three, three, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. And for the a little more tricky one, and Tara's going to put something on the board on the screen. Do you want to start with this or do you want to no lead sell sheet? We're not okay. going to use that at all. Just um, get rid of the formulas and the other stuff so it fills up more of the box. I'm sorry, that's not, that's not SharePoint. No, it probably isn't yet. I emailed it out right before. Oh, okay. So you have, it, you have it in email. It's in, it's in SharePoint now. In the email it. that went out like as the meeting was starting. There we go. Okay, so the way reclassification works is people either approach their manager or their manager approaches HR and says, you know, this person, their title doesn't match what they actually do. And there's two different ways they can come in. One is, hey, I noticed that these males are doing the same work and they're making more than me as a female. So that's an equity issue. The other issue is, hey, these males and females in other departments or even in my department are doing this work and they have a higher title than me. And so can we increase my title? And then um, HR and the manager and potentially others take a look at that and make a decision. This past year, there were eight requests or eight requests for this coming budget. Two of them were denied by HR. Um, those two both went for an appeal. Um, one of them went for an internal appeal. And, oh, sorry, let me, hold on. I'm sorry, both of them, um, one, both of them went for appeals and let's see, how did this, and they were both denied? Is that, yeah. sorry, and they were both denied, sorry. Two of the people who applied, one of them was a subordinate of the HR director. She worked in her department and the HR director didn't feel comfortable doing that process herself. Um, and so she requested an external third party analyze it. And that person said, yes, the um, request was valid. And so that was um, approved. The other person went externally um, because HR and the manager decided it was the best option. And so they chose an external process for that person. And that person was also approved. Um, and so 
There were four that were approved by Karen and two that were approved by external parties and two were denied. Does that part make sense? We haven't even looked at the table yet. Okay, now we get to look at the crazy table. And um, what I tend to do with the table is at the top, and in this case, at the bottom, it has to do with how I sort it. There are positions where we reclassified someone by adding a position and deleting a position. And so if you look at the top two in green and blue, you can see how the title changes. And in this case, they go from an OA4 to an ATP4. So it's a, a reclassification of the level of the job. And this is a union job, and that's the name of the union. Um, the second one is the IT administrative assistant. We're now calling them an office manager because that's who's closer to what they're doing. And they're going from an OA7 to an ATP. Again, that's an increase in class. The first person, um, there's no change in salary. And usually if there's no change in salary, it's because the salary difference was, was absorbed within the budget. There was already space in the budget or the person is a, filling a new job. Um, and so they were able to put that in when they put the new job description in. Um, if you look at the very bottom, you'll see another case, the last bottom two, where it's the exact same thing. We've, they're called after school. Their new title is kid care. <clears throat> they're moving from an MTP two to an MTP five. And the reasons for that are because after school kid care is expanding. They have more work and more responsibility. And to some degree, it's also bringing them up to comparable salaries to comparable towns. Comparable towns are not necessarily Lexington, Waltham, and Cambridge, where they have lots of commercial and industrial tax base. But they are the comparable towns who are in our the similar situation to us. Um, if you look right above that in the middle, we've also added a new position, kid care assistant preschool director. Um, and that person is only an MTP2. And the reason that person is staying is the other two are, ru are running operations and curriculum, not simply the daycare itself. Um, any questions so far? Go ahead. Um, that, does that line H program supervisor then track over to the right to that kid care assistant preschool, even though that one's in pink. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, or Terrace Island. No, a, no, H is not related to H. H in column mm -hmm. one is not related to H in column <clears throat> two. Gotcha. Which is, which is why there's a bold line. Yeah. yeah. Them up. So the, I'm just thinking about what happened in the rec department. Sorry, I'm a little bit thinking out loud, but That's in okay. the rec department, they used to have a director and an assistant director. Now they're going to two co-directors. So I see those at in the middle column as kid care director operations and kid care director curriculum. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. Um, and then the, the person above that kid care assistant preschool director, where did that used to be on the left side? It didn't. So this oh, okay. is one of the things that happens. Sometimes it goes all the way across. Yeah. Sometimes it's only in one column. And yeah. in the case of the kid care assistant preschool, it's only in one column and they only added, that's a ad new added position. Perfect. That makes sense. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. If you go to the next two, and, and in this case, we're going to be looking at the pink budget coordinator and the purple project manager. And if you look across the adding, the budget coordinator is by replacing the budget director. And the reason for that in this case was we weren't able to fill the position at a budget director level because the salary was too low. 
And we also realized that that particular role was better from a more entry level person who wanted to work under our current um, town manager and um, the, um, the assistant town manager who runs all the numbers to be able to see that kind of work and eventually move up to a director level. And so although it's MTP 10, the salary they're coming in on is, is on the lower end of the MTP 10 versus the highest end where we weren't able to get a director. So that's why we've made that change. Um, on the project manager, it has mostly to do with, the, and they're staying at the same rate, it has mostly to do with recognizing the type of work they're doing. They're doing project management, so that's what their title should say. Um, and so there's no change in that particular um, salary or step level or anything. Um, now, one of the, any questions on those? One of the things I wanted to focus on is back in column one, <coughs> you'll see in green, the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. So there's three positions in there and there's significant increases in salary. And the reason for that is these jobs used to be contract, except we're not supposed to keep a contractor year over year over year. So you're kind of um, not following federal and state rules. And so what we did was we brought them in, in internally, they're full-time staff. Um, the AYCC is a nonprofit. The um, current setup, and they do bill insurance, is that um, <coughs> their salaries cover, I mean, their, their intake covers their salaries. It doesn't yet um, and may never cover health insurance. And so the town does cover their health insurance costs, um, but they're able to, so it's not a true enterprise um, setup. Um, and that's something that you know, the town manager and AYCC and others can discuss over time, but to right now, that's how they're setting it up. Um, and then the others are mostly one-offs. And if you have any question about any of those, let me know. So the, <laughs> these two positions hanging out, like from row and the row 14, the working foreman. Yeah. And the assistant benefits coordinator. Yeah. What okay. happened with them? So those are reclassifying. Um, and they went from a, there's so there's a step change. They went from an AC7 to an MC8 and an OA5 to an OA6. And it probably has to do with they came forth and said, hey, you know, my my role should really be at this level because <clears throat> this level includes these type of tasks. So that's why it's not connected to anything, any other <laughs> basically the same position that was not classified correctly based on what they're now doing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I can add those were the two that were done by the third party. Done by what? The by third, the third party. party. Which one? Oh, which okay. two again? One C and one B. And Sophie, did you have a what? <clears throat> I think I, I was looking at the same thing that so for example the director of diversity equity and inclusion I feel like that was on last year's reclassification as well or fairly recently are we tracking for the same employee how often they get reclassified I mean do some of them come up every single year and do we have a problem with I don't know Where's that? Where, 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 yes that oh, okay. here Oh, was that last year's? Okay. <clears throat> I was first looking at the tab from last year. So, okay. First. Sorry. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, in SharePoint. Yeah, when you look at it oh, first, the tab, okay. the first, last the first year tab was last year. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's why I was like, why are we doing this again? <laughs> okay. And that's why I was like, wait, where is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Thank you. But, and do we track though? How often? Yeah, every once in a while. Because um, I do <laughs> tend to look back and I'll be like, wait, what are we doing here? Um, and she'll often mention that sort of thing. Okay. Like we did this, like in the IT department a number of years ago, there were some really big changes of how people were. And part of it was the change in director coming up and then the change in director happening. Uh, and so luckily I was doing IT budget at the same time. 
So I was hearing it in the IT meetings and the HR. Um, and I guess I explained it well enough for the test. Any other questions? The real class. Oh, shoot. That's right. If we add them together, one. Sorry. Adding. <coughs> Anyone else is faster at it than me? Go for it. Six, six. Okay, the moment I'm getting 11, 8, 8, 6. Okay. That's what you got? Okay, great. So let's call it 11, 8, 8, 6. All right. Any other questions? This one. Michael, go ahead. Um, purple, project manager, uh, SEIU 11 to superintendent of building maintenance, SEIU 11. So it's the other way around. Oh, no. So the, it, we're deleting okay. superintendent and we're now adding project manager. And again, that's because that's the type of work that person is actually doing. And so it makes sense to call them a project manager. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anything else? Thank you. Grant. Uh, um, I'm, Carolyn, I may not be reading this. Um, well, off my phone and with the tabs and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm going to stick with water and sewer because I would want to do repass. <laughs> um, but with water and sewer, there's a see a new position, in senior engineering that wasn't there last year. In your job, in, in within your budget, yes. you're seeing it, and you're not seeing it here. Uh, I don't think I'm. Yeah, well, I've not seen it there. Correct. Right. I don't even know if I should be seeing it. Right. Water and sewer. Tell me the title again. Senior engineer. Senior. S E I U. Grade ten. Ten. All right. I will ask HR and I'll send an email to both of them. It's Mike who I should be sending it to from your budget. No, who's submitting? Yeah, Mike. Mike's Mike. Good. Okay. Mike and. Karen, how did this position get here? I think I know. I don't know if it's part of B class. I don't know if it should be in B class. I don't know because it's a new. Go ahead, Charlie. Right. It, it, it's, it's in the work. It's probably in the uh, in the list of job descriptions already. It just oh. wasn't filled before. They can, he no, can, it wasn't vacant. I mean, it's new. It, it wasn't vacant last year. No, it, it, it could be in the table of job descriptions. Okay. And right. just not even. And then it, even though he hadn't hired it, he puts it in the department and hires it. That's, that's why it's not in reclass. But it doesn't usually list it as vacant if it's not. No, it doesn't have to. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. okay. But, but I'll think. still email them both and ask. And I'll come back with an answer. Usually they like to put it in there because it adds to the budget, right? And the, the one thing not necessarily the one thing I've asked before and I'll ask again is make sure you've checked your um particularly your director levels, um, your manager director level people to make sure that their max salary is not higher than what is allowed as the max salary, but their new salary is higher than the max salary. Oh, yes. I know I asked before, but just checking. So Al, Al will catch later and then he'll come at me. Um, if you don't, if I don't. And not Sorry. including with Jeffy, yeah. right? With Jeffy separate. Charlie? Yeah. So, what was the position you were worried about? Uh, senior engineering. In water, within water and sewer. It's SEIU 10. Yeah, there's a senior civil engineer position, SEIU 10, in the classification plan. Okay. Right. I didn't I didn't know. I don't know whether it's in uh should show up on the class or no, it's in plan. Not sure how the mechanism works, but okay. Anything else? 
Harold, and these are all uh, as, as began the beginning uh, two rationales for reclassification. One is an equity issue, where so none of these are equity issues. They could have been. They could. Have been. They could have been. So we can't tell by seeing it. Not necessarily. Okay. There's, there's also one other, and that is a new position. Right. 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 A, a totally. Brand new position. A, a totally <laughs> new position. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So Carolyn presented the reclass plan with a dollar figure of eleven eight eight six. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Carolyn. I'll proceed. Just two things I wanted to mention. <clears throat> Tara sent out the packets from Minuteman uh, today. Um, I think two things would be very pleasing. One, for the first time in um, forever. Forever. <laughs> the assessment's gone down. Yeah. Um, it's gone down about 5%. So that's what happens when you put the right man in charge of this budget. <laughs> uh, and uh, so any questions you have, uh, please ship them to me and I'll, I'll send them along to the uh, to the superintendent. Are you referring to Kevin Mahoney? Okay. Are you referring to Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Mahoney, to be the right man. No, I think you could have let it go, Charlie. Carolyn, you should be in the water. Actually, I, I wish no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take pills when we do I'm that budget. Any smart, uh, smart <laughs> okay, so uh, if you have any questions on that, man, you know, please ship them to me. Uh, they'll be in next Monday. Um, oh, and the. Uh, You'll, you'll notice that the uh, athletic fields are now being paid out of the uh, enterprise fund at Minuteman. So we're no longer paying that. <clears throat> and also because there was a big increase in state aid, they were, it was one of the reasons for the drop in the assessment. Part of that's going against the uh, capital, the debt service. Uh, so we won't really see it through the budget, but it'll help our taxpayers. Um, the second thing is, uh, Association of Town Finance Committees, they're having their spring meeting. It will be on April 6th. Uh, I think it's like 9 to 12 out at Pine something Country Club in Oxford. I think they had it there about two years ago. Um, they will have breakfast, which is basically coffee and donuts, and a lunch, which will probably be sandwiches. Uh, they're going to go into the, uh, the uh, governor's uh, legisla legislation, proposed legislation, uh, to give cities and towns more flexibility in how they run their budgets. Also, that's one part of it in how they run their operations. Uh, there's another part which actually gives local option taxing ability to cities and towns to do. I don't know if considering that they we just passed a 4% increase in millionaires tax, I don't think the legislature is going to go for that, but it'll be there. So there'll be a speaker from Department of Revenue talking about all these changes. Uh, and there'll be somebody from the Mass Municipal Association uh, talking about the economy and what's happening with the budget and local aid and things like that. So I uh, urge you to come. We could carpool out. Um, good way to spend a boring Saturday uh, Saturday morning. That's <laughs> also election day. Oh, election day. So yeah. if you're interested, um, let Tara know. Um, Shirley, I want to see if we can do it. Another budget to Thank you, Madam Chair. Very quickly, I think the fact that we have this, this field lighting being paid out of the Enterprise Fund is actually due to uh, the late Charlie Lyons, who brought this subject up with uh, Mr. Mahoney, who's the acting, now the acting superintendent, but was the, the finance director. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's do zero waste. Okay. So we actually voted on this, but we got information, more detailed information from them, which I think you all have. Um, and um, they were asking for 3,000 and that's uh, what they got last year. 
Right. Yep. So, um, is does anyone want to reconsider our February twelfth vote that approved their three thousand dollar request? All right. So that's done. Um, Human Rights Commission. What are people's thoughts? Were their budget request of 10,000? I'll last. I still don't understand, which is not easy. It's easy for me to do. Um, is, is why do they need separate email addresses? There is an email address for the Human Rights Commission. It's uh, Arlington Human, it's, it's got three letters and then the regular number. And uh, I'm assuming that the IT department can attach the say five members of the Human Rights Commission to their personal emails. And so it goes in one and then goes right out to the others. Uh, I don't see why they need it, each need their own email addresses and even if they did, I don't understand why the town won't give it to them. Well, you can ask why we each need our own, but we do. But in any case, even if they do, that's way, as I said, the budget's way too high. It's about 80 bucks per person. They can get more power than they need, which is about $1,000 for that budget. I also, the one question I think I did think is, uh, it's always FOIA requests. Is, is there, you know, in the Human Rights Commission, I would think there may be issues where they want to have a legal archive of their official correspondence. So, uh, which would be a reason to put it through the town, the archives, everything. I don't know if that's an issue for them or not, but but at least I know the 2,500, so about 1,500 too much for what they need. How much would you give them? Hmm? How much would you give them? A thousand. thousand. Which would include both the server and the you know, 13 email addresses. So, Topher and the town? Yes. If they need it. Your point about uh, archiving and stuff, they yeah. do talk about being records protected. Right. In the budget. So that does seem to be right. I mean, that, that basically comes free with me. No, right. It's not right. We're not sort of the budget. It pops into like a lot of people said, I think. I mean, it's shared server, the email addresses, and the retention are just built into the cloud system. Yeah. Right. Right. About 80 bucks on the clock. Carolyn and the So the the 2500 isn't just for IT, which is what I think I keep hearing you say, Al. Well, well that's, the, that's the item on the spreadsheet. 2200 or something. Yeah, 2200. Oh, okay. And then they were only going to put 200 towards training and extra events? Uh, just events, I think. Events, I think. It was just sort of, I think, to round up the number, honestly. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks yeah. like. So as long as they spend less of it on that and more of it on training and other things. Say what? No, say what is it? Is, it, is that a question or but, um, statement? From my perspective, if if we can get them to spend less on IT and we can tell them how to do it, then I think they should be able to spend the addition on training and events. That's my take. My but I don't sense. think we'll be able to do that. That's yeah, the micromanaging. Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's your money, and we're going to tell you exactly how to spend it. Okay. Sophie, and then Dean. Um, I think I have the same concern. Also, that, I mean, the website, I'm seeing in a lot of these commissions, there are a lot of money being spent for a separate website, and I'm not sure why it can't be integrated into the Arlington. Why do they have to pay for a separate website? Why can't it just be a page on our town website? I know from the Disability oh, Commission, <laughs> the, from the Disability Commission, the one address that's on our website that goes to human rights or disability, what I've seen is it goes to somebody in the DEI office who then forwards that email to whoever the chairs are. So it's not automatically done, but I think we could I wish across all the commissions that they would stop spending money on IT issues and it would just be integrated. Website and IT issues. So I understand why they want email addresses. I mean, because they, the way they interface, I think, or interact with the community and different groups and whatnot. Um, I think, it, like he said, I think it's weird to send an email from, you know, a Gmail account. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? 
Um, but I think the, the answer is probably very simple in that, um, you know, it's probably like the, of, the, of all of the town manager or the IT director's concerns, it's probably the bottom one. But we don't want to spend 2,500 bucks, even though it's not a big number, and start creating these little fiefdoms with separate IT. So we should probably just call the town manager and say, hey, we'd rather not spend 25 bucks, give them email addresses. I mean, that seems like the easier way is because I, I get what their concern is. It makes sense. Yeah, we paid for it either way. Well, right? I mean, so much. I don't, think, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think the manager is being malicious. I just think of the IT director. I think they have a giant list and it's at the very bottom of the list. And so <laughs> one group's at the top, the other one's at the bottom. And we just say, come on. I, I have to say, I was surprised that the Capital Planning Committee members don't have their own email address. That surprised me. Oh. There's a complaint about that. Yeah. And that's the that I have. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, did you have your hand up? Oh, I, uh, well, I respond to the website issue. We sort of talked about this last time. If you've looked at the town website, you know why these organizations do not want to use the town website. I mean, they just have no control. There's a visual presentation, there's events, there's a, there's just a lot of issues. The website is not actually that much. I agree with everyone that the emails amount seems very high. I would support a lower amount this year, and if they can come to us next year to sort of justify, if they if they decide, oh, I really just can't do it for this money, and they spend the extra money in the events this year and come to us next year, okay, you know. But it, it seems like they weren't clear about exactly how much it was going to cost. <clears throat> Charlie, yeah, I, uh, you know, you you just made comment, I think, Madam Chair, thank you, by the way, for recognizing me, about not micromanaging. I mean, I, I don't, this $2,500 is a 33% increase in their budget for $7,500 last year. I think that's, we should just reject that on first principles and let them figure out how to spend the money. That, that would be my recommendation. Josh? Um. Unfortunately, I, I have a feeling they will have more business to address this year. And so I think I, I would be supportive of the, kind of the IT cost, but as Carol said, maybe spending it for the waste. Doesn't seem like they're going to be wasteful. Grant and then Carolyn. Oh, thank you for coming here. He said plainly, he said he'd like to spend the money on events instead of IT. And that's what I heard. Of. So, and again, we don't do that. We don't micromanage anybody else on $43 million budgets. So um, it would be nice if he could tell some of the events, but it's still, um, he, he said, he admitted, I'd rather, I'd rather spend the money somewhere else. So I'm fine with giving him the money. Carolyn? Can we tell him to come back? He's got he's to come up with an uh, accurate number there. Um, he's got to go out and figure out what it's really going to cost him. Come up with come up with something that makes sense to the rest of us, and then show us where he's going to put the other money. How much is the training going to cost? What would we then use on events? We could, um, and then are we going to hold him to that the committee to that that you will only spend X amount on that? That event, you know, that X amount on training, or uh, that X amount here or there. Well, we do, we do, we do do that every year. We look back at. I, I would hope we're looking back at what people have done. Did they do what we said? What they said they were going to do, and if they didn't, then 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 we go from there. But from my take, human re human. I'm sorry. Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission has, for the most part, done what we've asked them to do, done what they've said they were going to do. And now they're saying we'd like to do these extra things. We'd like to add training and we'd like to beef up our email and website um, and IT infrastructure. Um, and so I would move that we tell him he has to come back with more details about his budget. 
we did this with art for a while, the Arts Commission for a while. I mean, this is not new to us and it's not necessarily micromanaging. It's simply telling them to show us really what they're doing because right now what we're saying is they're not showing us what they're really going to do or they're going to waste a heck of a lot of money. Rebecca? Um, I just wanted to respond. Thank you. I just wanted to respond to what Carol was saying. I think, I think he intends this to be a very detailed budget. It's just that maybe we don't, maybe we find that last item a little bit implausible. About how yeah. about how expensive those email addresses are going to be, and I have no point of <laughs> reference for how much. But but those, I mean those that looks like a pretty detailed budget to me. It's compared much more detailed than the art. Says. The art people, right. Carol, they right. have no budget. It's, it's yeah. just the <laughs> issue now. Yeah, like if the yeah. twenty five hundred, if you don't really believe it's going to take right. them twenty five hundred to do these email, right? And um, you say, well, what are you going to do with the I mean, leftover money? Yeah. Okay, but but I mean. He, we got the two two four six point four zero from somewhere. Okay. Like and that's for training. I, I didn't look. No, at oh no, that's for the email address. Yeah. Oh, that's. But it says three hundred and seventeen dollars and twenty cents for incidentals. That looks detailed, but <laughs> right, it's precise, but maybe not accurate, right? Um, but so, I don't know. This, I guess, I wouldn't say that what we need is more detail. If if, if you're telling us that this number for. 2246 is too high. That's a separate issue, but this looks decent. That's all right. Dean, then I'll toss you, then I'll jump. I move the $2,500 increase as recommended for a total of $10,000. Second. I'll toss it. I was going to make a motion to, to, for $9,000, but one at a time. <laughs> so Dean's made a motion for $10,000. It's been seconded. I'll jump. Well, at to me, it's, I mean, first of all, since I work for small businesses, I hate to see anybody get ripped off, but it's its almost more, it's unclear to me what the policy issues are. I want to hear more about FOIA. I want to hear more about what the, I, I want to hear that they understand their IT thing to make sure that they're doing something effective. And it's just because I'm an IT, um, it, a thousand bucks, who cares, but, well, I care. but, but I worry more about they don't really understand what they need. And and it just sounds to me like they get sold something that they don't really need, and that bought it, that that works. So I, yeah, if they come back, I'd like to hear a more detail. Yeah, you know, bring your homework. Tell tell me what you really need. So we, Charlie, I move that we table this budget. Well, we have one motion on the floor, and now we have another. Yes. Okay. Do we, do we have a second for tabling? Second. second. All right. Any, so we have a motion to table and then a motion to approve the $10,000 request. Al Tassi, you can make a motion to approve $9,000. No. <clears throat> I'll withdraw. I'll go. We have two votes now. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we'll take Charlie's vote first. If it's tabled, then it's tabled. Um, and if Charlie's vote fails, then we'll move to Dean's. Motion to approve the ten thousand. And Charlie, what do you what you are tabling it for? What reason? Um, tabling till uh, they come back with an explanation of their budget. Well, they gave us an explanation, but okay. another one. And and how much? What 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 else? Would, what are you going to explicitly request for them? What what do, what are we going to ask them for? I have a specific idea. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that the uh, oh, I want an explanation of why it's going to go up to twenty five hundred by twenty five hundred dollars, and I don't think they've given us a good explanation. All right, um, Topher, then Carolyn, and we'll take the vote. Yeah, I was going to say that if we handle this, we probably should like get written questions that people have to them rather than just say bring their homework. Yeah. You can say, like, these are the specific questions that need to be answered so they can go work on those and then come back or respond. But it's able to answer. Carol? Um, I, would, I would ask, yes, for, for both IT and training, what, what they're actually spending their money on and, and why. So, I have a question. If, they, if, if it were tabled and they came back and said they were 
that the discussion is correct. They overstated it by a thousand, but now they'd like to move that extra thousand to training, which he did say is where he'd like to spend money. Aren't we at the same? I mean, I'm expecting that would be the response, right? I'm expecting that they're going to do their homework. They're going to talk to Al. They're going to say, oh, yes, we over budgeted a thousand. Now we want to put that thousand towards training, which we already said we need. Aren't we at the same spot than if we approved it tonight for 10,000? Um, and we can approve it for 10,000, still have that discussion and lower the, I don't know, just, it, it, is that what would happen? It's my that, understanding that, that, is that, that's, if they, that's get the, process. If they get the email services from the town, and they put their website on the town's website. They don't need the twenty five hundred at all. They need it for training. They need it for training. Well, for events. That's right. because we're making the assumption that they need ten thousand dollars. If they don't need the, the IT money, then their the rest of it is, is being requested at seventy five hundred. So they came here tonight with a ten thousand dollar budget request. Two thousand. They they justified two thousand with the idea of getting email addresses. They also said they would use more, they would like to have more money for events and more money for training. So I think Sophie's point is a valid one. If, if they will come back with answers to some questions and then we're still gonna get a $10,000 budget request. And then, then we're gonna, then we're gonna be in a spot of is, is what they're asking for Justify, just like zero waste asked for 3,000, is it, is it justified? Um, so um, other questions, hands up before we take a vote? Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess it just seems like if we table it, I, I think we, it's likely we might approve it for 10,000 in the end anyway, to give us a little leverage just for him to talk to that. Peggy. So I actually, um, I like Al Posti's idea of just saying 9,000. Just to. There's 13 people that do a lot of work for the town. Mm -hmm. Well, right now we have a motion to table. Okay. If that loses, okay. then I will have, we have Dean's motion and I'll okay. entertain. Third, a third motion, but right now, do we just table it and re revisit this at another date or not? All right. So, all those in favor of tabling this, raise your hand. Two, seven, eight, nine, four. Uh, all those opposed, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And any sentence. All right. So the motion to table wins. Um, Al Jones and Carolyn, um, tasking the two of you to contact them with specific questions and give them a deadline. And um, hopefully we can revisit this by next week. But if I could help them save money so they have more yeah. money to spend on something else, yeah. great. I just want them to, to, right. to yeah. not waste their money. Yeah. I'll send you their email address. Okay, great. Well, I, I'd like an explanation of why the budget is going up 3%. Okay. Um, I got it. All right. Um, I think that. Is all that we need to do tonight. So, so just a quick update on disability admission. I did finally today get confirmation that they will not ask for more. I have followed up now asking for the budget, but <clears throat> I've given them a week, but I don't have a response. So, I don't if you will, let's see what we can get, if anything, this week. And then we'll take that budget up and we have time next week. So on Wednesday, capital planning um, is on the agenda. And typically we spend most of the night on capital planning. But if we have time left over, then um, we will maybe take up the library 
Um, and um, anything other, anything else that we might have? If anybody has any questions on the capital plan before Wednesday. All right, does anyone have anything else for us to know? All right, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.